This is Jess, Wes and our daughter Izzy. After selling our house and most of our possessions at the end of 2021, we've packed up our Van Bevan to tour Australia. We are Life is Vanderful. trying to plaster on my biggest smile for so early in the morning because um, today we were up at six o'clock or five to six which is the earliest we've had an alarm go off in a very long time and I forgot how much I hated that noise um, and now we've come to the boarding for Spirit of Tasmania and we've just had a little breakfast in the car we just had some oat bars and yogurt and things on the way here I got here just in time. They've got a very narrow boarding window of 7.20 to 7.45. There's a lot of cars ahead of us uh, waiting to get on board, so we're just slowly creeping forward at snail's pace. Um, but once we do get on board, it's 12 hours of sailing. I'm hoping it's gonna be calmish seas today. We've had a lot of wind lately, but we'll see how we go. <laughs> Isabel didn't want to get out of bed. Normally she's out of bed first, trying to get us out, so it was vice versa today. Good morning. Settling. We're not staying in a room, uh, which are all these doors to the left and right of us. Um, when we come back, we'll be on a night cruise, so we will have a room and we'll, we'll sleep overnight. But going to Tasmania, um, yeah, during the day, no room. We're going to go find some things to do. We've just been to the movies and watched a um, mini movie with Izzy, and now we're going to go find some games. We're here. Yeah. <laughs> We're here. We made it to Tasmania. Um, the boat ride wasn't too bad. So I get very seasick and I stocked up on three different kinds of drugs and ginger. And it basically put me to sleep for pretty much the whole time. I think it was ketamine, cocaine, <laughs> morphine. and morphine. No, yeah, no, does that make you go crazy? Um, anyway, I just really had a good sleep. <clears throat> and, oh. And I don't know what I'm doing with the camera. I basically just had a really good sleep and Wes was so good. He looked after Iggy for pretty much the entire trip. Um, she had a little nap as well. And then the last sort of couple of hours, we just played some games and had some dinner and it wasn't, wasn't that bad. It ended up being, um, what, 10 and a half hours? 11 and a half. Or oh, 11 and a half hours. So they say it can take anywhere between nine and 12 hours. So I guess it just depends on what the sea's doing. Okay, but we are right. finally here. We're going to get a good night's sleep and then ready to start exploring tomorrow. First full day in Tasmania and the first attraction we've come to is the shops. So we have to stock up on all our food because when you come over here you can't take um, fruit and veg, anything like that. So we've come to the supermarket, got some, um, got some of that stuff and now we're heading to Launceston is our first port of call. If our eyes don't deceive us, it's Cataract Gorge. 
Oh like that pun? Like that dad joke? Corniest dad joke ever. Perfect place for a picnic here on day one in Tasmania. Cataract Gorge, but I don't think we'll be going in the in the pool. Jess says she might push me in the pool. That's that's nice, <laughs> isn't it? So Jess and Isabel are gonna go on the chairlift across the other side of the gorge, whereas I'm gonna take the suspension bridge. So luckily Jess and Izzy's ticket has a good map of Cataract Gorge and you can see uh, all the different walks that are available here. So there's heaps of different sort of walks and even them, some of them turn into hikes. Uh, so you can go to the left, um, to the down this route towards number 11, you can walk towards the power station. That's about a 50 minute return. Um, I, came over the, I came over the suspension bridge which was just yeah five minutes from the cafe and started the chairlift. We've come around to the other side here is playground for kids and you can keep going sort of down to the right of, of this diagram towards the main road. There's a walk that goes through the cataracts or through the cataract gorge I should say uh, across another bridge and then you sort of zigzag up along, along a path there and, and return which, which takes about maybe I don't know anywhere between 30 minutes and an hour depending on your, your fitness level. Um, so yeah it's really cool, cool area, lots of different options depending if you want a short walk or a long walk or just have a bite to eat or a play or a chairlift so yep lots to do here successful first flight with the new drone didn't crash it so I'm improving so we came out to Penny Royal this morning which is sort of like a mini theme park attraction I guess you could say and it has ghost rides and little boat rides on the water with a pirate ship um, you can do sort of um, a high ropes challenge on these bridges and a zip line and a bit of a mini bungee jump it looks really really cool and um wes has dropped in here before when he's been in tasmania uh, midweek and it's all been fine but now it's just weekends only so unfortunately we can't do any of those things because it's a thursday <laughs> um so a little bit disappointing but is he still having fun just playing in the playground here and now we'll go find something else to do in launceston but I think um, it would be a really fun day out. So if you're coming to Tasmania and you're here on a weekend, I would definitely come and check it out. So we've come to City Park and there's a cool kids playground here and also a monkey enclosure so 
some Japanese monkeys sort of running running a bit bit wild. Uh, so Izzy loves gorillas, monkeys, all types of animals. So we're, we're going to walk there and um, show them to her, and hopefully they're not scratching monkeys or <laughs> anything like that. So we'll keep we'll keep a lookout. So we're in the town of Longford in Tasmania, about 20 minutes south of Launceston. And this nondescript pub behind me is called the Country Club Hotel. And I've been here many times over the years uh, for a beer and a pub meal here. And Jess has never been. And this place has got a bit of a unique history. Uh, so I'll show you inside and talk more about why this is, uh, why this is quite an uh, interesting, unique and historic place. So back in the 50s and 60s, this used to be the mecca or the, the hub of Australian motorsport in terms of international events. So there's a March long weekend every year and all the Formula One stars from overseas would, would come here and, and race around the streets of, of Longford in Tasmania. So it's quite an exercise for all those teams to um, freight all their cars on boats and they'd quite often bring them over here and then sell them on to Australian customers. But yeah, this town, there was a, a big sort of race festival vibe around this place in the in the 50s and 60s across, across a long uh, weekend in March. And yeah, all the big Formula One stars of the day, like Jim Clark, um, Surtees, Graham Hill, um, used to battle it out with Australian, Australian drivers and teams and race here. Uh, you just go across bridges, go across railway lines, through a viaduct. Um, it was quite the racetrack until they, they stopped racing here. Uh, 68 was the last race here, um, just, just on the edge when there started to be serious accidents um, around the world of motor racing due to the speeds getting faster and faster and the safety not being up to standard. So unfortunately they stopped, stopped racing here. Um, but yeah, this pub is uh, still a remnants of that time um, with lots of information on, on the years that they, they raced here. So really cool place, uh, come here a lot for work. Um, when we used to race here at Simmons Plains with the supercars, I'd, I'd obviously work there at, at the track, which is another 20 minutes down the road. Then we'd come here um, often for, for a beer and, and to read all the information on the walls. And one of the coolest stories is a driver called Lex Davison. Um, and I've actually worked with his, um, his two of his grandkids, um, Alex and Will Davison previously. Um, and yeah, their granddad used to race around these tracks. He was a local local Aussie and one of the famous stories here is he crashed at this corner called Pub Corner he crashed and then his wheel went flying up in the air missed someone that was it was up in a in the hotel and after he crashed he came here and uh, went straight to the bar and promptly down to beer so he he now has the um, has this bar named after him, so it's known as the Lex Davison Bar. So that's yeah, pretty cool story about about this place. It's hard to believe that it used to be one of Australia's premier racetracks back in the 50s and 60s uh, for racing cars here as part of the Tasman series. And behind me, it's fallen down trees, but this used to be part of the racetrack. And behind me here is the, the viaducts. This is where the cars would, would come through 
and race race through this tunnel, race through some messes, turn around and go back across another bridge and back to the pub where we've just been and go through pub corner. So yeah, people back in the day used to stand up on top of the railway lines, on top of the viaduct and and look down and watch watch their, their racing heroes as they went went past uh, back in the 50s and 60s. So yeah, some, some 60 years ago now. We're on our way out to Piper Brook this morning to check out some wineries and on the way there is an old abandoned railway tunnel um, about 600 meters of darkness with ghosts and scary bears. Ooh! Um, how do you like the attire? We've got the snake proof snocks, socks, snock socks just in case there's any creepy crawlies or anything inside there. That's not going to save you from bears. <laughs> I don't think there's any bears. <laughs> we got your soul alone. Hunting alone. It was pretty spooky in there, but not as claustrophobic as I thought it was going to be. Obviously it needs to be quite a big um, tunnel for a train to fit through. But if you've ever seen the movie Descent, I expected those little sort of alien zombie like creatures to be crawling on the walls. What did you think of it Izzy? Was it scary? Yeah. Yeah, did you see any bears? Yeah. Did you see any ghosts? Yeah. Yeah, we saw bears and ghosts. Brook Eden Wines and 
it's a small, smaller sort of winery. Um, it's just two minutes around the corner from uh, Clover Hill Wines, where we were before. Uh, a bit more of a family-run uh, winery here as well. Um, we didn't really film anything, um, but yeah, the wines were just as nice, just as lovely. Uh, and now we're going to go over a lot of bumps, and we're going to go to a town called Derby. Um, it's not really anything there for us, it's just to, um, a stopping point for the night, so do some free camping there, uh, then we can we can hop towards uh, Bay of Fires tomorrow, that's, that's the next thing on our list. Um, but we always have to manage our time to sort of spent on the road driving uh, with Izzy's sleep schedule and, and everything like that. So we could probably get to um, sort of St. Helens tonight, which is on the East Coast. Be about two hours, two and a half hours from here. Um, but yeah, it'll be, it'll be sort of five, six o'clock by then. Um, and Izzy will probably yeah, fall asleep in the car and wake up grumpy. So. Um, yeah, probably best we just, oh, there's some big bumps. <laughs> the road in here is, is pretty crazy. I'm doing, what am I doing, four kilometers an hour down this path and it is as bouncy as anything. Um, yeah, so, yeah, that's, that's our next stop. So, we'll, uh, we'll chat again soon. So, Izzy and Jess are running down the path, running down the road that leads us uh, back to the winery. Uh, so Izzy was screaming. She didn't want to go in Bevan. She wanted to run with Mum. So this is some of the things that happen on a daily occurrence. Izzy's very stubborn, but lovely. We love her, obviously. But she, when she knows what she wants, she uh, won't do anything else. So she ran. She wants to run with Mum. Ice cream. Ice cream. We were at uh, Leven, Lavender Farm? I was say, yeah, Lavender Farm. Brightstow. Brightstow Lavender, Lavender Farm. And some noisy ducks. Geese. Some noisy geese. And hey, Jess and Izzy want a yeah. ice cream. Lavender ice cream. A lavender ice cream. And we're going to look at some purple flowers. Mm. And I feel like a coffee. So we'll see what this has. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. If you're liking our videos, please subscribe.